Alright, we're here on Pitbull Comedy and Music Jam. <laughs> Named after this young man right here, Merlin the Magical Pitbull. And I've got a whole studio full of guests. This is the first time for me. Uh, usually I have one or two, maybe three, but I got one, two, six, six, two, four, six. I got a Tupac t shirt in the room, I got dreadlocks in the room. I got a woman in the tracksuit ready to go running. I got a, a hip songstress with a bone chapeau. That's what they say in French, a bone chapeau. Shit. It means nice. The literal translation is good hat. The uh, spirit of the translation, the, the literal translation is good hat. The spirit of the translation is bon nice hat, pal. <laughs> bon nice hat, pal. That's what we used to say back where I grew up when you got a haircut. Everybody would make fun of you and go, yeah, nice hat. I like bon <laughs> And then I have the man who brought them all, uh, DeAndre Coolidge, who's been here before, who wrote a special song for my other show, and we'll get to that. But I just want to go over a couple of quick things, uh, you know, funny news items, because that's what you're supposed to do on comedy shows. <laughs> You know, the, the security and the concerns about terrorists, is, it's really big and there's reason it should be. But this happened yesterday or two days ago. Two men dressed as women uh, tr tried to drive into the NSA headquarters in Virginia or something, and it's, it's covered as like a college campus. You know, it's NSA, National Security Agency. So the first thought, of course, is, you know, Islamic terrorists, they'll, they'll do all kinds of things, you know, and they actually do this in the Middle East. They dress as women to try to escape. and They do all kinds of things. Okay. They're nefarious characters. But it turns out the car they were driving, they traced it down to some guy, and this guy had been, uh, he picked up these two men who dress as women who were apparently transvestite hookers. That's what they were. And he went to a motel room with them to do whatever they do. And, you know, not my place to judge, you know, <laughs> whatever. But the thing is, you're always rolled in the dice if you do something like that, because what they did is they knocked him out. I don't know if it was just a lot of alcohol or they slipped their own hypnol or whatever they did, because they took his wallet, they took his clothes, they took his car, and they took off. And they were toasted drunk. You know, it had been a night of partying or a couple of hours. And it, 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 they could have very easily ran their car into a fire hydrant, but it just happened that they ran it into NSA. And, it's, and, and if a car is barreling in towards a, a federal uh, headquarters of any kind, any kind of, they, they're shooting first and asking questions later, you know. So one of them got shot dead. One of them, I think, is critical. And at first, uh, there was a big concern. You know, it was... Uh, it was, uh, you know, terrorist-related, and then it turned out it was just deviance, you know. Well, different from the norm. So, uh, I, you know, I mean, it's sad. The guy died, you know, I don't, I, but it is, you just can't. It is funny, you know, that if you're, you're going to bop around irresponsibly, be nefarious, r r r steal from a guy, steal his car, and you're going to drive it drunk, and you're, uh, you're an idiot, uh, at least... Don't drive it into a federal security facility because, like I say, they're shooting first and asking questions later. Everyone's uh, freaked out about Indiana. They made the law that some people think says that if you're religious, you don't have to sell a wedding cake to gay people. But that's not really what it says, and there's laws like this all over. Uh, and then some. The law's been going on since Clinton put it in. Ninety-three in D.C. Oh, right. So that? it's it's really a, it's a big knee-jerk reaction because more and more the awareness of being tolerant of the LGBT community and if you watch your TV, there's characters in almost every show because they want to be accepted and okay, fine, whatever. But uh, but they had some good analogies. And it's not quite the same. But I mean, what if you're a a a black baker? 
and two guys come in in the KKK robes, and they, they say, uh, you know, we want you to bake a cake for us. Well, knowing that the purpose of the KKK is to get rid of all the blacks and the Jews, that's the, their primary purpose. They're, they're worthless now. They have no... But, well, I ain't baking you a cake. In fact, I'm going in back for my 44-ounce Louisville Slugger, and I'm beating you guys because I just, you know, you're... So, but, but, but here's my thing on the, on the refusing to bake a wedding cake for gay people. I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm about money. I'm about business. I'm about generating money, stimulating the economy. I used to work in a little cafe in Toluca Lake. We got a lot of gay couples in there. Man, cash. Uh, D dinks. Hello. Double income, no kids. Hello. Although now they're having kids. But double income, no kids. They have expendable cash, and if you own a cafe in their neighborhood, you want them in there. Yes, you do. You want them ordering to go when they're having a party. You want to cater their parties. So I just find it bad business. I understand you're religious, whatever, and you think the Bible says, you know, no gay matter, whatever. Dude, wedding cakes cost a lot of money, unless they're asking you for some explicit you know, sexual, uh, uh, you know, they have some of those dirty But then you, then you charge more. But you said it in a word. Discrimination equal bad business. It's However bad you business. Cut. It's bad business. And, you know, the KKK thing is, yeah. I was online at the post office once, and I saw a guy in front of me with shorts, and he had a SWAT sticker tattoo on his calf. Now, I, had I been 6'4", 220, I'd have followed him outside. Oh, I'd yeah. have said, How'd you, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Jew. Right. I, I would have told him, listen, my dad's black, my mother's a Jew. Uh, you you got a, a SWAT sticker, and I'm gay, I would have told them. Uh, so, so you got a SWAT sticker. So, you know, your, your purpose is to eradicate me. I'm 220, a 6'4", solid muscle, jujitsu expert. Let's go. Let's dance right here. I really wanted to hurt that guy. But, you know, you can't risk it. You got to be careful. And it was an odd thing to see. Somebody put a SWAT sticker. Nine foot snowman. I'm at the Drudge Report. And by the way, today is Tuesday, the last day of March. Last day. The last day of March. April one tomorrow. No, I'm not doing April Fool's jokes. And the the degree to which some of these pranks have taken t taken it on Facebook. Some of the things you see, you're going to see soon in the news. Someone that got pranked it kills the person that pranked them, mm. because they go way too far with some of the things they do. So. Um, uh, what else is going on? Uh, search engines make people think they are smarter than they are. Yeah, well, uh, over half the country has an IQ that hovers under 100. So, you know, uh, there's not that many smart people out there. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, there was one funny thing I wanted to say. Uh, oh, there's a new Daily Show host. He's a biracial South African. That nobody really has heard of. He was on Daily Show like two or three times. That's who they picked. Every a lot of people wanted Chelsea Handler. She's pretty mean, you know. But all right. Anyway, um, there's all kinds of crazy. If you watch the news, I mean, we live in an insane world. That's all there is to it. And I am a news junkie. And one thing you learn from the news and watching Criminal Minds is women. Uh, you know, if I was a woman in any urban center, I'd be packing. I'd be strapped. I don't care what the law says because uh, maybe I'm watching too much of that criminal minds. I've mentioned this before and watch too much news, but man, you got to be alert out there. There are some nefarious characters. There are predators out there. So drink your um, pit, pit bull. bull energy drink mm -hmm. if you're a woman and you're going to be walking in a parking garage late at night to get to your car. And, uh, you know, maybe you're already into the MMA or the... Um, the jujitsu, and I love seeing the posts on Facebook of the women that disable their attackers. They didn't know what they were coming up against. That's always fun. Uh, but uh, we opened up with Every Day I'm Hustling. That's Rick Ross. That not Freeway Rick Ross. Freeway Rick Ross was the guy that the CIA gave all the crack cocaine to, if I, according to the movie. Uh, you know, uh, and um, but this Rick Ross is the big. Uh, he's a rapper, right? Yes, he is. Uh -huh. But I saw that song first time on a Cat Williams. Cat Williams is brilliant when he wants to be. You know, he went south for a while. But <coughs> when he came out to that song, that's the theme song of L.A. And today I have musicians galore, producers of music, and maybe they can tell me uh, if they've ever uh, had the pleasure of meeting Rick Ross, because that is a hand I'd like to shake, and. Um, and how, how much they're hustling. Because I'm hustling to a degree, but I'm not hustling as much as Rick Ross is saying I should be hustling in that song. Hey, Howie, I have to ask yeah. you a question. Okay, so let's introduce you first. Oh, sure. He's been here before. This, 
I think the second return guest. Yes, it is. My name is DeAndre, DeAndre Coolidge. Coolidge. DeAndre Coolidge, uh, what is it, great great grandson, grandson of Calvin Coolidge, the president? Yeah, I say that. To the, <laughs> I like that, Howard. The secret. The 12th president of the United States, Calvin Coolidge. 12th president? 12th, 12th president of the United States. <laughs> I got a history teacher, yes, too. Yes. I didn't know. <laughs> okay, so who did you bring with you first? I you first, I brought. To my left is um, the lead singer on the song that we do have, but we will be hearing later on in the show. Okay. Is Sky. And the Sky. name of the song is, is, it, is CBT. Sky, wait, is it Sky just like Sky? Si, is there an Cielo. E? Cielo. It's, Cielo. But is there an E on the end? No. no, no okay. No. And then over here we have the upcoming feature artist and known rapper and producer is going to be a part of the team. His name is Hennessy. Hennessy. I, I E. And he has alongside him as his entourage. He has a couple of friends with him that's in the studio along with us is joining us today. Who, who's sitting next to him? It's my boy, Mike. Mike? Right. And mm. who's the, dread, the young dreadlock? Uh, it's Rasta my boy, Florian Aaron. Over there. Aaron. 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 And we have Cherry on the other side. Does she security? <laughs> is that what's She's going on? Because <laughs> she looks like she could kick my ass for sure. <laughs> All right. I love the dread. And, and, uh, can we get a camera on Aaron for a minute? Because mm -hmm. here's my question to Aaron. Mm -hmm. What is it like to have 0% body fat? <laughs> Nobody likes you. Nobody yeah, likes I you. I know. Tell me about okay? it. Okay? It ain't right. Yeah. It just ain't right. So you, have you always had the dreads? Are they dreads or are they braids? I've had dreads. Well, they're, they're twisties. Twisties they're called? <laughs> yeah. Because I, I, I got it. I did it myself, believe it or not. And, you uh, do it yourself? What about back here? I did it myself, too. Oh, is that just right? A little, a little, you know, when you're skinny, it's kind of easier. You kind of just... So those, how do those become dreads? If you put them together, do they turn they into dreads? They start as twists. I mean, you, you just get, don't comb you, your hair. Pretty much. You just don't comb your hair. And you don't wash it either. You twisties in it and just let it just go for you wash a it. couple months. <laughs> but you wash it. I do you got to wash it. Some of those guys don't wash it, though. That's true. I, and then once it locks you, you dip it and go. But, uh, have you ever been to Jamaica? Yeah. No, I've never been to Jamaica. I have. Belize, though. Belize Jamaica. I have. You know what they say in Jamaica? If there's any kind of trouble at all, like the trouble we were having was it was raining every day. And, and all the people there were from Boston and New York, and all they wanted is to get tan. They didn't even care about the sex or the, the drinking, of course, is important. But the main thing is getting tan. It was raining every day. So you'd ask the guys that work there, when is the sun coming out, man? When am I going to be able to lay in the sun? I'm on vacation. You can still get a tan if it's cloudy, though. No, no, know. it was raining. It was the rain Noah saw. I mean, it was raining. And <laughs> this is what the guys that worked at the resort would say. Don't worry, man. Job bring the sun tomorrow. Mm. Every day they tell you on the sixth day the sun finally came out. I didn't care because I had won money on a game show and I had just come back from a week in Tahiti. Well, you're Jewish too. They knew on the sixth day that you'd be have a nice day off. You could chill in the sun. You'd be all good. <laughs> but I, but I can I tan well and I used the good stuff. And when I came back to Tahiti, I was as dark as him. Oh, that's yeah. right. So I went hey, to well, Jamaica well, already. Anyway, tan. Up in, up, I grew up in Berkeley. Okay, in yeah. Berkeley. So in you're, Berkeley, you got so the hippie see, in you. Yeah. So I see that I see the dread look all the time on uh, campus. I went to school at Berkeley. You did? Yeah. I went to school at Berkeley. Did uh, you used to have long, stringy uh, hair? And no, I smoke know. a lot of bud. No, in the middle no. Of the <laughs> no, I was an athlete. I went there and played ball. That's right. So you told me that. That's right. We couldn't, we couldn't do those endeavors out there. But uh, yeah, I grew up in Berkeley. All right. So you are, of course, yourself a musician, and Sky is. You, you just Sky. sing, or you play instruments in the whole deal? I sing. I I dance. I sing several genres. I sing R and B. I sing rock and roll. I sing jazz. I was featured at the Long Beach Jazz Festival last year. Right on. In Long Beach, you can catch me uh, April the 18th out at the Seabird Jazz Lounge, where I sit in with this great uh, Palmer Jazz project. We do everything from jazz to R and B. And DeAndre is my good buddy. Wait, wait, where's the Seabird Jazz Lounge? The Seabird Jazz Lounge. It's, it's Roscoe's, dude. Right next to the Roscoe's. It's the Roscoe's Lounge. You mean in the original Long Beach. here on Pico? I'm talking about no in in Long, Long Beach, Beach off of Broadway oh, next oh, to that oh, Roscoe's. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so the fun. Seabird Jazz Lounge is Herb's spot that does jazz. We do R and B. I'm there Saturday on the 18th with Palmer Jazz Project, and uh, yeah, you know, it, Roscoe's is an is an enterprise. I was getting my hair cut. Uh, last week. Here's what was playing. And you guys, I don't know, how, you guys might be too young, but you need to know this music if you don't know it. Uh -oh. Okay? This is what was playing. What was playing? Though you, and now I can't sing. In mm -hmm. fact, I'm the only child in the New York City school system to be kicked out of Glee Club because it was traumatizing the other children. But this is what was playing. Mm -hmm. Tell me who this is. Okay. Uh, you better know. Come on. Though you may not drive a great big Cadillac. Diamond in the back, sun rooftop, digging in the sea. You may not have a car at all. Just remember, brothers and sisters, you can still stand tall. Curtis Mayfield, Curtis, Curtis, Superfly. But that was, it was done, Curtis Mayfield did, and it was done again. 
Well, uh, Curtis is the... But original, you and Curtis, Curtis, Curtis the original. Do you know that song? I know the song. I didn't know it was Curtis Mayfield, though. Curtis ba- you got to know Curtis Mayfield, man. Yeah, yeah. You fly. may not try. That's how it's supposed to be sung. And then... Uh, Freddie's dead. I remember the That's other guy that sang that. I can't remember. They yeah. come to me before the show. You never worked with Curtis. Is Curtis still with us? No, he's not. He's, <laughs> did you ever have <laughs> the pre- joy of working with him? No, he, I, I didn't, never had an opportunity to work with him. Oh, yeah, that guy know. was, you know, he was amazing. <laughs> legendary. He was, he was one of my, he's one of my mentors. He, he also did Move On Up to Your yeah. Destination. Yeah. He's very uplifting. Yeah, Curtis yeah very, 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 uplifting. very positive. There was Curtis music. and uh, Isaac Hayes. Isaac Hayes. The Black Jesus, they called him, right? Jesus, yeah, Isaac Hayes and Curtis Mayfield. Those are the guys I used to listen to all the time, besides Jimi Hendrix. Well, uh, of course. Yeah, you know, Everybody listens to Jimi nobody Hendrix. Nobody Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy's uh, the best. There was, was no, I mean, he was uh, he's like yeah. a gift from God. And, and, yeah. and, you know, him, Janis Joplin, Jim Morrison, Jesus. all dead at 27. Jim all of them at the same age. Yes. But Jimi Hendrix, I mean... That's, it's uh, just I off am, the man. charts, you know. Uh, I love that guy. Even so you do all kinds of different music, yes, and you I produce do. all different kinds of music. Yes, I do. And Sky yes. sings various genres, but you're really good she's with the jazz. Very versatile. And very good with everything, really. That yeah, I, she's I, very versatile. I, I and uh, uh, Hennessy. Hennessy. I've had the Hennessy, not my Remy. Man. Hennessy. Yeah. You're not a rapper. Remy, but Hennessy. Rapper. Are you, you're a solo rapper or a duo? A rapper, a songwriter, I produce. Yes. Yeah, and when you rap, do you do the freestyle? Like if I told you. A little you, bit of both. I can you can go right off the moment, anytime, mm-hmm. anywhere. What's the number yeah. here again? I'm 323 965 1600. Because I'm, I'm text. I'm RMC, you right now. RMConair.com. They're trying to block And me, I was but... told that you no longer have to say the WWW by two comedian guests. And I, we had a big blowout. It almost got physical. Because I'm like, no, you have to put the WWW. And they, they're calling me stupid. You don't. See, I have to defer to the youth. Oh, yeah. They know better than me. <laughs> I've been wasting, how much of my life have I wasted putting the WWW in the last 10 years? <laughs> when did the WWW stop? Like 10 years ago? About 10 years ago. 2000. It's not right, man. <laughs> it's probably more than that. Okay, so you got Tupac on the shirt. Tupac. Now, Tupac really was like, the rapper, right? I mean, of all those rappers, he, was he the biggest before his untimely demise? I think he was way before his time. And because I don't really know rap music that well, you know, I, I learned more when I watched Notorious about Biggie, Biggie Smalls, Notorious B.I.G. Okay. And I learned a little bit about the the East West War and, you know, but that movie was. A, did you watch that movie? Yeah, I seen it. It's a really good, good movie. movie. Did you ever? Um, did you ever? Anyone ever know how Pac got started? How did he get started? Oh, oh, sure. Are you want to share the story how Pac got started? Yeah. Okay. I was you, just, you know, you know him well yeah, I knew Pac to very well. Pac. Yeah, I knew Pac. Uh, we call him Pac, like Fote. Um, <laughs> but anyway, he started in the Bay. First, he come from New York. Okay. And he was struggling. He was struggling with his music, and he landed up in the Bay Area. And uh, there was a group called Digital Underground. Digital Underground. Well, with Sloot and Money B and Shock. Sloop uh, and Money? Sloot. 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 Not Snoop, but Sloot. Sloot. Yeah. Uh, H- Atron and Sloot started a group and brought Money B and Shock and Jig and all of them involved. And at the time, Shock, um, Shock ran into Pac, and Pac was living out of his car. He'd have a place to stay, and his mom was in Oakland, and she was having problems. So um, what they did, uh, he... He wanted to be so much into music. He loved music so much. Right. So what they did, they brought him in, and what they did, they got him to help him out, got him on his feet. He was a roadie for Digital Underground for for like a year, and so he was doing so well with Digital Underground. So what happened? They brought him in, and they started to bring him in as as a, a roadie, and he just started carrying the bags around and things but like that. But did they know that he was also N- no? I was a there too. I, no, he was just on stage, and and then he just started freestyling with Money B. Uh, one day we were all listening to him, and he said, "Oh man, this guy is good. This guy is great." This has to be. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, one thing led to another, and then what happened? They did the thing with George Clinton all around the world, and Pac was on the stage. I said, "Man, you're gonna do well." World Before you knew it, he started song. blowing up, started blowing it, up, man. and it started blowing up. And then when um, when they gave him the opportunity, he took he he, he took he took control, man. And uh, the rest is history. He just continued now, to go. Now, is it they never did uh, convict anyone? Or even arrest anyone, is they that right? They did. Orlando Jones, I believe his name was Orlando Jones. Mm-hmm. 
But and and it's believed that this guy was hired by or affiliated with the West. Pac was East Coast or West Coast. Originally, he grew up in Baltimore, but he was a West Coast artist. So it was Biggie Smalls guys that came and got him. Is that what's nobody really knows? You know. But I mean, is that who the who was the feud between with the the West Coast East Coast? Well, it started out the big guy on the West Coast was Tupac. Yeah. And who it was it Biggie? Big. Notorious B.I.G. was there. You know, when I watched that movie, one thing I noticed is uh, P. Diddy, who was in the middle of all of that, right? Mm-hmm. He, and should night. It, well, he he knew <coughs> should I have said that how before? dangerous that game was. <laughs> 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 what was that? I, I missed that. What, what, what happened? Is it? What is it? It's Shug Knight. Yeah. You know, Careful. he kicked it off at the Oh, Shug Knight. Oh, oh, man. The story's no, on that no, guy. No parking last game. He can't but, bail out right now, so I'm good. <laughs> yeah, be yeah. careful. But this is the <laughs> thing. Now, the yeah. smartest of all of them, from what I picked up out of that movie, was Puff Daddy, because he knew that that game could lead to getting shot. Yeah. And he didn't want to be getting shot. He knew the kind of money that was available mm-hmm. and the success, and so he he just was like diplomatic. He played it right, and he's still alive and kicking and thriving. He's always been like that. You know, and Suge, where is Suge? Yeah. Suge ain't getting out of jail ever. No. He's done. No, no, Drake going to put up 20, how much? 25? I, I think, honestly. Oh, is Dre going to put up the 25? I don't, I don't think, I don't think he, Dre's going to do it. I think Chris Brown should do it yeah. because he saved Chris Brown. He took six well, bullets no, for no, him. Well, no, no, he's going to give Snoop. He's going to give Snoop. Suge took uh, the six bullets for Chris Brown? Chris Brown. No, if Dre said party. he would, he would put up, he would put up the 25 million if, Chris if, Brown. Uh, no, if Suge gave Snoop death row. Okay. That's the deal. Oh. Is that right? That's the and deal. And Dre has it because he sold the headphones deal. The the beats. He got he made billions, right? Oh, I don't know, but they got they, yeah, they, they got like a billion. Well, no, dollars. yeah, and then they just started dogging Dre. I don't know what I didn't even read it on the a Facebook. A lot of drama iTunes in that game. and the and yeah. the beat something's Dr. not Dre written down. 25 million. You yeah. know what when the court tells you you've got 25 million dollar yeah. bail? I believe so. Dude's a billionaire. The court's saying you ain't going nowhere. Yeah. You're but Dre's done. Dre's billions on them beats. So I know you're right. He actually could put it 25 mil ain't what? 25 mil. All right, so you're, <laughs> are you, how long have you been at the rapping game, Hennessy? I'd say about 14 years now. 14 years. How old are you? I'm 29. 29, okay. So are you going out and performing at different clubs, or and you're in the studio, and you're, you're working it, and every day you're every hustling? Day. Every day I'm hustling. Now, here's the thing. I don't know if Andre told you, but DeAndre told you, but <clears throat> whoever's on this show, once they're on this show, that's it. It that's explodes. It. And the deal is, of course, 20% floats back to I me. I got you. <laughs> and it floats yeah, back man. in crisp $100 bills. <laughs> I got you. Okay? You got to keep these coming. Too. And Hennessy, I got that's you. Right. Wait a minute. Adam Crispies. That's what we got called you. it in New York. I had a friend that used to eye Crispies. I love that she about knows. Like this yeah, right not now. the well, Benjamins. She grew, up in, she grew up in Virginia. I grew up in Bayside, Queens, white, middle-class Jewish. And we had a guy that used to iron $100 bills and starch them and put them in the freezer so they'd be Chris Crispies. Benji Crispies about that thick. Yep. Right on Yeah. Thank you. you have them delivered by a couple of really nice-looking women. I got nice you. You send me some more of these pit bull yeah, drinks. Yeah, you can have all the pit bull energy okay. you drink as long as I get I'm gonna my 20%. I'm going to mix that in the now, fact, Matter of fact, we got a show April 5th. That's coming up, like April, days away. Yeah, April 5th. But what, I, but, but what I did do, they don't know anything about it. What's that? Oh, it's a uh, surprise? You're surprised well, it was going to be a surprise. It was uh, It was a iHeart uh, show, they just but, the, but we haven't had the watch. chance. We haven't. I haven't had the opportunity to work on the new material, so we put it back. It was supposed to be in Chicago. So where is so the show going to be? It was supposed to be in Chicago, but but what I did, I I put it back, and it's going to be a surprise. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's not going to be here. I'm not going right. to be able no, to it's, see. No, it's going to be in Chicago. We're trying it's to get it closer now. Uh, okay. So you'll be able to attend. Okay. You'll be, you'll uh, okay. Be if it's going to be here, I can right. attend. Good. Right. I want the backstage, right. the whole deal. In fact, right. I'm going to come. Backstage with my posse and start. We're gonna have some drama. Just and don't cause on trial. Oh, y'all causing trouble. We'll be on yeah, TMZ. We're gonna be on. We're gonna be on but that's what you're that. supposed to do with those award shows, right? Let's do it. Yeah, we're gonna turn. But up. I, if anybody pulls a gun, I'm just gonna go. No, 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 no. no I just no. wrestle. No, 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 <laughs> no. No, because remember they had. Uh, what was the award show not too long ago? They had fights in the back on the red carpet. They, Ridiculous. you know, whenever they have these award shows for the, the rap community it's somebody in there is being out of line you know and and and, and it's it, it's just like this is a great thing you got this award show would everybody calm down 
you know. But see, but see how it. The, let me be honest. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with you with that. In the Bay Area, I work with a lot of different guys. Okay. Rapping Forte, E40, Richie Rich, all the guys, Mac Dre, Drew Down. Man, we never did had that problem. Man, it depends on where you go and who's coming to the show. What that, about that drum always I come know. when they bring it. If you if you squash the, yeah. that before, because uh, right how now do you squash that this before? is this is what I'm doing right now. This is how we squash it. Okay, back okay, in the tell days. Me. We did. I did this thing with Ice Cube, DJ Quick, Rodney O, Joe Cooley, and, ya, and Yo Yo, which is Yolanda. And it was called Increase the Peace. Unity in the Increase community. the Peace. And that's what Good. I'm doing like now that. here in LA. Okay. Right I did on. it in the Bay Area. Right. And I got some following behind me right now. I got the other radio stations behind me. And that's what we're doing right now. And that's what I want to promote today. It's called Increase the Peace. Unity in the community, and we're going to stop the violence. Stop the violence. Okay, and that's what this is all about <laughs> that right is now. A... And this is taking off right now. And I've had Snoop. I talked to him two weeks ago. Snoop's in. Snoop, he's not in. I'm, uh, Cube is not in. But I ran it by him. I ran it by Ice T and all the guys. And I'm getting their support. They have to thinking about it because this is L.A. So we taking it slowly right. by surely. And right. believe me, it's going to be a transformation. That's what I'm working on right now. Old school with the new school. That's I'm going to make awesome. it happen, man. I'm back in I, L.A. And that's where I'm at right now. That's Bam. that's a great uh, idea. And if you get, I mean, Ice Cube did the Friday movies. Mm -hmm. And he, I remember seeing an interview with him where, because he was like a bad bad boy rapper, yeah. right? And yeah. then he changed because he had a kid and a family, yeah. and he did fun family movies. Like Friday, the Friday movies were great. Fantastic. Yeah. You know, they were really funny and, and really good, and he's like uplifting. Ice yes, T is. is the guy that's on SVU. The, yes, yes. He plays a cop, but he's got, he used to, I don't, you know, he's had some of those songs that were really nasty yeah, to cop his killer, cops, cop right? killer, cop killer, cop killer, but they, they, they now he's settled yeah, down yeah, a little. Yeah, he, he changed it, and he was going to lose his contract behind it, but, but Ice is, you know, Ice had to take it off the market, but Ice is down. All All right. the guys and, are down. and Snoop has a kid that's going to be a pro football player, Snoop, right? Snoop, yes. He's a daddy. Yep, yeah, He's Snoop, a daddy. Snoop, too. But, um, the it changes for these guys when they have kids. Yeah, yeah, it He's does. a granddaddy um, now. Yeah. Oh, He's deep, right, right? Yeah. He's he a granddaddy? He's rocking a little frosty granddaddy. on the dreads. I checked mm. that out. All right, so go on. Go no, on I was just going to say, I was just going to say, uh, I remember working with Cube when he first left NWA because I know some guys that started NWA. I, I'm not going to drop any names, but... Uh, uh, what's most important is um, when Cube got out of NWO and left, he was uh, he got the stereotype of the bad rapper and everything. And we had problems in promoting him. Uh, and we really did. Uh, we took the, we went to Vegas with it, and 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 the radio stations blew it out of proportion. And we didn't and we didn't do very well. And uh, DJ Quick is another one. But now Quick is coming in with his own. And I guys these guys have the experience behind them now, and they have the stigma, and they have taken that bad boy and made it into the good. So, and, and, so everybody and, and, has to, you know, uh, to kind of like, like, like right now, rap has always has given, has been given the bad. Well, and it's it, not, it's not all the rappers. No, but it has a definite perception it. of that, uh -huh. that world, mm -hmm. you know, as the gangster, thug, all that stuff. There's a definite perception, and um, and it is changing. There's some rappers out there really being inspiring and all that stuff. And, but uh, N.W.A. is the movie that they're shooting. Right. Exactly. These guys kind of. Paved the way, right? It was Dr. Dre, Ice Cube, and who else? The Doc. It was MC Ren MC and DJ MC Yellow. Ren. Those and are the guys. Those right are the guys in NWA, those guy NWA with the Ice Cube. But Ice Cube. MC Ren, DJ Yellow. And Ice Cube's the only and one Ice Cube. still alive, right? No, he... no. DJ Yellow's producing movies. Oh, okay. Yeah, and uh, so, MC Ren is still doing his thing. And it was at one of the location shoots for NWA That's when it all where Suge got killed that guy. I know. I was supposed to be there, and, and I'm glad I didn't. That is a wild story. Okay, listen, yeah. should we take a break and run? We're going to okay, run cool. a commercial for uh, our energy drink, Pitbull energy drink, and then we'll listen to some tunes that you brought, okay? Sounds good. What? The commercial's pretty, pretty fun. You guys will get a All kick right. out of it. He was drinking the other one, so okay, he lost so three hot babes. Okay.
because they were drinking the pit bull. That's not good. He blew it. He, uh, he was lean, but uh, he had the six pack, but. <laughs> not mean. Got to drink the, the you know, right one. I mean, when I walk out of this place with the pit bull energy drink and I take him along for a walk, uh, you know, I got I to gotta carry a. Um, like a, a, a straw, uh, like a branch to beat off the women that keep coming after oh, me. Oh, wow. So, Watch out, Howard. Because I'm like, listen, you know, I'm just one man. <laughs> anyway, all right. Ginseng so, in it. That's really yeah, good for that you. Yeah, ginseng is some mm -hmm. good stuff. It's the best Okay, so what, who are we going to hear sing now? We brought a CD. Uh, uh, yes. What are we going to sing? Sky, come in. Come Sky's going to sing? Is she singing live or are we No, we're going to we're gonna listen to the CD. Okay, and what, tell me about this song. Okay, basically it. this song, this song that I put together, um, Basically, I put this guy, I put this song together. Um, it's um, a song that Sky and me have collaborated on. I wrote, and uh, basically, I wrote this song, basically, basically for the women of the day and the kids. Okay. So if you listen to the words, uh, you can see where I'm coming with. And and I was collaborated with along with a, a very uh, father, a gospel, a very good friend of mine. I've been known over 30 years as Andre Crouch. Uh, rest in peace. He died about three weeks ago, uh, oh. but I was at his bedside, oh. and he's he he was um, he, he was, was a, considered a father of gospel. Yes, he was. Wow. I mean, he he wrote You're stuff. The first from, family of gospel, the Crouches, if you didn't know. No. Yeah, uh, yeah. Andre, Andre um, um, helped out the Hawkins, Yolanda Adams. I go Stevie Wonder. I can go. I can go. Kurt Flank and Donnie McClurkin. I go on and on and on. Shaka Khan. Um, uh, matter of fact, the new song that he has together before he passes was Stevie Wonder. Really? And, and him, yes. Um, but anyway, Andre collaborated with me on this song, and this song is is a very uh, inspirational, positive song, and um, I hope you enjoy it. All right, we ready to play it? That was you. That was the wrong version. Yes. <laughs> that was yeah. you singing. Yes. And sweet. you singing too. Huh? Okay. Yeah. Um, and so the we plan. The, it. You know, you create a song like this, mm -hmm. and now the plan is to get it out to the public. Mm -hmm. 
So what goes on with, uh, you know, getting things played on the radio in this day and age? Uh, you know, do you have to have representation or do you just have to have some friends in the business? Or you just have to, you know, send them the CD or, or the song and, and they, they hear it and they're like, yeah, this thing should go on the air. How does it work? I love it, Howie. All of the above, man. All the above. All the above. It's really relationships. Yeah, it really And you got to yeah. deliver the goods. Yeah, yeah. Even you if do. it's your best friend that owns a radio station. Uh, one of the sound engineers here works for, uh, what is it, KJLH? Yeah. Stevie, at Stevie Wonder Station, right? Right, right. Uh -huh. But, but he, you know, even if it's your best friend and you, you, you still, they, they can't just, it's got to deliver the goods. So to me, I don't know, you know, I'm, I have no music talent. But that sounds like something I'd hear on the radio, well, you know? Yeah, uh, what you have to, first you have to get a song that the public likes that they want to play well, on, the radio, yeah. on the radio. Um, yeah, um, what I've done, I've, I've been, um, um, I worked in radio a little bit. I worked in film. I've been working in music a long time. I, um, my first song I ever put on the radio was back in the 90s when I was working with a kid, uh, rapping for a Tay out of the Bay with um, uh, singer um, um, Valerie Watson. Uh, Grammy Award winner used to be with Club Nouveau, and then she was original in Vogue, and then a uh, young lady out of Oakland, uh, a little bit, and had some of Digital Underground's uh, musicians playing behind. And um, I only did, I did it um, for, because I know we need in the Bay Area uh, just something real positive and, and, and inspirational, and the name of the song was Angle Ever Give Me. And when it went to KML up there with Raynell and Davey D, and them, um, they liked it. and. Um, and from then on, um, those guys got deals. And I said, well, you know, there's something that I'm putting a spin on something that people like. And so I kind of took a retreat for a minute. And um, I said, well, I'm back in L.A. And I said to myself, um, I want to kind of like see where I stand. So when I did that and I working in film, basically um, I let a few of the guys on the set listen to some of the music that I'd be doing. I got a few other songs that I produce. And um, they said, hey, I like that. Where could I pick that up? Where could I get that, man? Get, make me a copy. So I said, okay, then. So what I did, I took it to the next level. And then I, um, I started just started producing here in L.A. And I used to do showcases with a lot of different artists. And so I said, well, let me just showcase some of the talent that I have. And just right. basically that's how I got started. And I know people in the music industry. Yes, I do. And yeah, it also helps. Right. My brother was, um, he was A&R for Motown. So I, I got a lot Your of Your brother was? Yes, Well, yes, that he certainly was. helps. And he works with Stevie and, and that. So, uh, but... Uh, along with personality, you gotta have personality. You know, you gotta have people to like you, and uh, and believe in what you stand and stand behind what you believe. Right. In. And now the increase the peace thing is that a, a, a like have you created that as a nonprofit, a 501c3 or whatever? Or? Yes, it is a nonprofit organization. And you have uh, a website that people. Uh, right now we're putting up the website on that. Um, um, I just started back up, but um, I've been dealing with Indy 100 on it, um, and they've been promoting a lot of. My music and um, yeah, that's one on, of those iHeart stations. Yes, it is. iHeart has every yes, they, they yes. took over Clear Channel, right? Yes, yes, okay. exactly. And um, they've been promoting the music, and I just well, I'm gonna put it on there to, to see how it sounds. And they and they stand behind what I believe in because we need it more now and all over the whole world, not just in Los Angeles. And yeah, but you got to start go, somewhere. Yeah, you got to start, start now. It's gonna, we're gonna go I mean, hopefully go state to state. Right. And then I'm picking up um, new artists to join along with me. And uh, I heard that Kitty Lamar. He's um, getting involved in a few other people. I'm not going to drop names right now until we get, you know, we take yeah. this thing rolling. But it started, it's like it's like a snowball. You start rolling, and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, right. and that's where it's at right now. And it also helps when you have sponsors behind you. Oh, and no right question. now, right now we have Indy 100, and they're loving the stuff that I'm doing and standing behind me. And and they was asking me if, if any other artists I can bring to the door with me, uh, that would be behind the movement. And right. that's where it is right now. Not only just that. I'm uh, also, uh, I work in film, and we have some uh, star young actors from Nickelodeon, the TV, Nickelodeon. Show, the TV show, and I got uh, Matt and Noah involved in it, so they have a, they have a, a, a running crowd, a fan base behind them. And, right, right. And so that's kind of where, where it starts. And you, you got, yeah, and you got to be active with that social media. You got to have someone that knows, I've said, today's Tuesday, I bought my uh, quick pick right down the road. If I win the Mega Millions, one of the first things I'm doing is getting like a 22-year-old kid who knows the whole game with <laughs> social media. Mm -hmm. And and he's, you, make, you, you got a good job waiting for you if you know the Twitter and the Pinterest and the Instagram. Because I don't take pictures everywhere I go. I don't do all that stuff. And I'm on Facebook, 
But I think I've sent two tweets in my life. Well, I'm trying to tweet us right mm -hmm. now on Facebook. Mm -hmm. They're giving me a little bit of hard time, but I got a couple of pictures up. So. Oh, She's okay. an expert right here. Believe, believe it or not. Yeah, well, I, I, you I know, know Hennessy is, too. Yeah, I might be Mr. Miyagi <laughs> yeah, yeah, that. This <laughs> is gotcha. the generation of teenagers. So I'm surrounding now. myself with but some, some, some yeah, real top Yeah, you're night. smart because yeah. te teenagers now, kids that are like 11, 12, 15, 18, they're not watching TV anymore. Mm -hmm. Everything is on screens okay. that they hold, right. you know, comp or, or not even desktops, they're, you know, it's mobile, it's everywhere, and soon they're going to have the, the watch, but you hit a button and you're going to have a holographic screen in front of you, you're going to be able to watch in 3D whatever TV show or movie you want to watch, that's mm -hmm. what's coming. Mm -hmm. So now, what about our, our rapper Hennessy? Uh, do we have do any we of his freestyle? music here? Or no, you, you want to do a freestyle? You want to go freestyle live? You, you want to do a rap freestyle? about me? Can I, can I uh, cuss? No, no, no cussing. No, no, you can't. I, we, you nah, can't. No cussing. That's a few reasons. <laughs> no cussing. No, no. Okay. Add me. I mean, we're okay. I'm going to make it hard for him, okay? Add All me. right. We're going to make, make it harder for you, okay? D-I-A-N dot Wilson on Facebook. Add me, and I'll show you all the pictures from today's show. Right now. <laughs> all right, you freestyle. I'll sing behind you. Let's show oh, him how we do Does he need this. a countdown or anything? You want to get up? No, no beat, no nothing. Just I just got to go a cappella. What, you, I don't know. Do we, beatbox? You, you can get a, No, no, we did this before. Uh, we can find a. Uh, what do you want? Uh, <laughs> Paulina can find something. <laughs> what did we use last time? I forget what we used. It was a. Uh, mm. There you go. There you go. Look at that. Yeah. Is he gonna go with this? Yeah, I'm gonna go with this. Go ahead. Okay. Give me something. Give me something. That's crazy. No, we're gonna do it live. This is how we uh, do it. We let's go. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh. You you falling off on the beat. Uh. uh we did okay, beat. We got it. Yo, I got stripes, run DMC, but I'm chilling. Radio RMC. You know, we get it in all day. I don't play. Got Sky on the vocals, and she get it yeah, in all day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I need her oh, to sing. Yeah, yeah. Tune in on oh, the note. Yeah, yeah. Tune in on oh, the note. Yeah. I'ma rip the microphone, cause I'm sound like the goat. They call me G-O-A-T, and I'm not lazy. I come through, they spitting at me, hitting me straight. G, but I dodge the bullets, and I'm back on the mic. Man, I'm going a cappella, so the flow ain't that tight. But I'ma get it in all night. Let me, let me, let me. All right. That's all, that's all I got for y'all. Like, we, no, we ain't got no beats, so I did my best. We ain't got no beats. Okay, I got some for you. I got right, some for right. you. Make, 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 I got make. some. I got, I got some for you. It's freestyle on my, my vocals. All right, let's go. All right, here we go. All right, I don't need any music. All right, I make, I make my own music. Er Erlen right. came over during that. He here we was, go. He really did. Here we go. That. You ready? Here we go. Things seem to want to bring you down, but I won't let them get me now. They put chains and shackles on the feet, but I won't let them get me now. I said I won't let them get me now. Damn. <laughs> That's, it. Right, That's how we go in. Now, Sky, 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 come on, Sky. Off the mic for a second. Uh, come on, right. uh, Sky, I gotta get a ball. Right. Right. Come on, Mike. Come on, Sky. Okay, okay. Let the uh, producer uh, get the film on me. No, I don't need no beat. I'm gonna go old school. No beat. Mm -hmm. no beat. <laughs> ready? Am I ready? Michael Jackson. <laughs> when I had you, I treated you bad. All right, go, that, girl. Wait, that was Michael Jackson song? Well, yeah, I redid a little. You Actually, know. let me it, ask you a question. In Vogue, about... too. In Vogue did it, oh, too. Yeah. In Vogue did it all. I was like the Michael Jackson song. In Vogue is where Beyonce came from, right? No, no, no. Oh, Destiny's Child. They came from Destiny's Child. Child. <laughs> in, 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 in Vogue came from uh, the Bay Area yeah, yeah, yeah. with Denzel so, and McElroy. What happens <laughs> when you have, like, Destiny's like the Michael, Child? The Michael Jackson. There was three women, right? Mm -hmm. And then oh, Beyonce just blows up. How do the other two women handle that? They, 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 does anybody know who they are? Are they still active? Michelle are they Kelly Rowland. Session work. Yeah, they're solo artists. They're doing good. But it's got to be 
I miss the question. Uh, you think they're happy for a success or kind of, you know? They try to get back together, but you know. That's got to be tough, I think. It was, it was pressure. You're a three. You're, you're a trio. You're, you're, you're popular. You're doing really well, and then one of you, she don't just get big. I mean, do you know that they said Beyonce is more influential, I think, than the president, in mm -hmm. like Time Magazine or something. She's gargantuan. But well, you, you know, gotta realize a lot of media is paid for by corporations, so it's really the corporations that are gargantuan. And corporations. And it benefits if you them check to it have. Out, yeah, if you check out it there. out. Corporations don't have. They they realize that their level of control has to be maintained by, you know, a, a certain number of people in their in their camp. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So what they do is they pick genres and they pick uh, uh, types for for yeah, the general they, yeah. public. For yeah. the general public. Okay, yeah, but they but couldn't. It's a, but they it's a machine. But it's a machine. All right, all right. No, but let's, still, let's, they, they can't make Beyonce. It's No, 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 that. but it's a machine. Think about it. Okay, I grew up with old hippies. So I integrated two neighborhoods. Back in the day, the old hippies that I grew up, everything was about Sting. Their mamas and their daddies listened to Led Zeppelin. They were still part of the machine. Their songs about it. Welcome to the machine. Welcome, my son. Welcome to the machine. I, I mean, would. it depends on the age in which you grow up what's the most popular thing corporations want to spend money on that which the people want to buy so they put a popular face there and that's how you this is really how you become big you hook yourself in to the corporation the corporation Pepsi that's how Beyonce started to get really big if you remember when she came out Pepsi just like Michael Jackson was like Beyonce that was the thing so they pick one person and that person they put their corporate dollars behind because they know they can pimp that person across the globe with their products and get their products sold this is a oh, there's no world. question that what's driving everything is the the, the they want your money. But uh, think about this. You know what I've been telling people? We talked about what's going on in Iran and those mullahs at the beginning. Mm. I've been telling people for years what they need to do is pump sex, drugs, and rock and roll into those those countries. And that, once the... the well, sex, the, drugs, and hip-hop now. Well, that's what I was just going to say. Can you imagine yeah. if there was an uprising in Iran of all these teenage boys descending upon the mullah's castle or whatever the hell they live in doing... Uh, freestyle rap and just they nothing could, if it spread nothing could stop them. once you get a taste of freedom that they tried remember not too long ago there was an uprising and I'm convinced all the intelligence communities like from Israel the Mossad our CIA the uh, you know the English MI6 James Bond you know they're in there they're pumping rock and roll and hip-hop they're pumping pictures of Beyonce and J-Lo and uh, <coughs> Hopefully soon, one? me. I'm not going to yeah. play with you. Well, you, you, my biggest concern <laughs> for you, and then uh, you, the old hippie thing, that's bad because the hippies pulled the biggest con ever perpetrated on the American public, what and they you? tried to tell us that money wasn't important. You? Oh, well, see, I know Screw better. Screw those hippies. Yeah, no, I know better. I hate but those all the hippies. hippies. But hey, didn't all those hippies, like, if they are still alive, now they're all make rich. that money? Yeah. Thank you. That's I do, I do a thing on my stand-up about sensitive songwriters. Mm -hmm, you know, um, mm -hmm. the Beatles did... Uh, 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 you know, all you need is love. Everything was love, right? But they also did a song, John Lennon, Peace, Love, and Understanding, you know, peace ins, love ins. He also did a song called, uh, this is how it goes, you know, you better run for your life if you can, little girl. Hide your head in the sand, little girl. Catch you if you, if, if I can, that's the end, little girl. Catch you with another man, that's the end, little girl. Now, if that song was made today, you know how, what it would be titled? You, you screw around on me, I'll kill you, bitch. Yeah, but he ended up, his ass ended up getting popped for cheating, but, didn't he? I know, but, but, but I'm but, saying he was all about peace, love, and understanding, but when it comes to women, remember, Jackson Wong, face, Brown like, oh. beat his wife up. Uh, uh, Robert Blake. Paul, Paul Simon was recently, <laughs> there was speculation he was beating on Edie Brickell. And then Neil Young, the hippie of hippies. You know, remember the song he had? He had the hippie, had, Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. These were the hippies oh, of yeah, hippies. Yeah. Neil Young too, has man. a song. Down by the river, I shot my baby. It's like, dude, I thought you're a hippie. Well, I thought you're everybody, you know? everybody, everybody, everybody. And then Jimmy. Women. You know what Jimmy's song was about shooting women? Jimmy's song was, Hey Joe, where you going with that gun in your hand? Yeah. See, but I'm, I'm going down to shoot my old lady. See, I caught him messing around with another you know, man. man. You're yeah. talking about hippies. I These guys up, are very possessive, is yeah, what I'm saying but with you their gotta women. Be careful. Certain women, like I grew up in Virginia, and when we're famous for cutting it off and throwing it in the field, so yeah, you know, well, certain women you don't want to. Yeah, play but you're with. not Latino. 
It's the Latina yes, chicks. That, oh, well, there it is. I'm mixed with many things. Yeah. If you're a guy and you get involved with a woman that has American Indian blood, Hello. Native American, or Latino blood, or mixed, uh, then you better keep better one be, eye open. Hello. Because where most women will kill you slowly with... But you need to know this because you're going to be a big rap star sending me a lot of money. So... What the ones that get obsessed with you and you know think that they're going to be your wife and then you find out you were just Norwich. having a good time, uh, most of them what they do is they'll kill you if they can have you for the weekend in your eggs, they'll be a little arsenic in your orange juice. They kill you, so, but then there is Lorena Bobbitts and they you know get the knife out and no. and they they I'm, cut I'm you. Not for marriage. Most women will kill <laughs> impersonally, they call it, with poison. Uh, some will shoot the guy in the back while he sleeps and then talk about the abuse they suffered. Some but, will walk uh, away. Yeah, well, that's the other option. But, yeah. but, but there are, you know, crazy women out there. There's no question. What happened to but the high grits? I, I had they don't the, do high grits no more? Me, no more. That, the the peace love and understanding thing I'm but all But you know the hottest song they by the Beatles <laughs> is Let It Be, man. I love Let yeah, It Be Yeah, I know. So great, yeah. great song. Okay. Yeah. Who else? Does anybody else need to sing before this hour gets wrapped up? What about you? I only sing in the shower, so... Oh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a pianist, a guitarist, and a songwriter. You play the keyboards? Also. That's the one thing I'd like to be able to play. I grew up, my best friend played the accordion. Don't ask me why. Why would you give a kid an accordion, not a piano? And then my, I said, I want to learn how to play the key accordion. And I took, like, two lessons. I didn't know. I, it was a bizarre thing. What would what are we gonna be a poke play the polka at, at Polish way? No. The squeeze box. Yeah, but that's well, you know, once you're in a big polka, rock. It's band. a Mexican thing now. Yeah, but you start you should learn the accordion era. off of learning the piano all keyboard instruments, you learn the piano first, right? So and you're you are an, uh, you too with the rapping or no? This Nothing? is head of security, is security right here. Security. Head of security right here. All right. He's a ninja. He sits there quietly. Ninja. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he watches us. Watch, I'm watching. Watches I'm watching. Back. I'm in the middle of watching this movie back. with Stallone called Get Carter, and he's like a hitman, and he's coming to get vengeance on the guys that killed his brother. And everyone he runs into, the guy goes, "Who are you?" And he goes, "I'm Carter, and you don't want to know me." Hmm. You know, and hmm. he, that's a good oh, threat that, line. Yeah, that's yeah, a good threat right. line. You don't want to know me. So, okay. So where do they find you? Tell the people, website, Facebook, uh, Twitter. Face, Facebook, uh, Dion, D-I-A-N period Wilson, F-B dot com slash D-I-A-N period Wilson. And I give you all my information. It's not under Sky on Facebook. Uh, no, you find all about that like later. I go by okay. my government name on Facebook. In government case, name. In case the feds are, are trying to find me, I'm in, <laughs> I'm in plain sight. I'm not I'm not hiding anything from them. So. Are you uh, part of that anonymous hacker group? You wouldn't answer if no, you were. No, that's the <laughs> <laughs> But I dig them, man. I'm not gonna lie and say no, that I don't. Ain't. That mask no, and everything. No, they don't want to hack me. No, uh, uh. Yeah. But you can you can find yeah. me on DeAndre yeah. Coolidge ninety nine at Gmail. No, no. It's, hey, check this out, man. They put the rap videos up in Radio Land. Okay. It's D A N. D A N. D R E. That's da Dandre. DeAndre. DeAndre D -A -N is Dandre. DeAndre, come on, with apostrophe. D apostrophe oh, okay. A N D R E. You need to add the apostrophe because it's okay. D A N D R E. Coolidge. C O O L I D G E. 99, 99 at gmail.com. Okay. Bam. Yeah. Hello, let me forget before I forget. Hennessy, you said you've been rapping for 15 years. You're, you're 29 now. 14, yeah. So you, oh, 14 years. So at 15, you took to it? I mean, was your family musical? Did you. Well, I started with uh, with poetry, but everybody in my family, they were singers. Oh, okay. So singers. Did you guys uh, all sing like in the church choir? Yeah. I did when I was young, and then I just stopped. I, I took a liking to poetry, and after poetry, I started listening to Tupac and Ice Cube. Oh, uh, okay. And I fell into the and rap thing. What about you with the hippies? Did you wind oh, up dude, in the church okay, choir so, or no? Yes, I did. I, I, <laughs> I integrated a church, and being the first person of color, actually, there was an Italian guy that was a little darker than me. They were so happy that they decided they were going to do a United Nations now that they had a brown skin girl. So my first gig, I was seven. The congregation was like 2,500, and it was oh one of those. God. Yeah, it was Mega. one of those. It was one of those night before. You know, I grew up in a Judeo. Christian house. So the school was Catholic because it was the best one in the neighborhood. And so we did the midnight mask. So uh, at seven, at 2,500 people, I was singing. It was all oh, church was packed, standing room only. I sang, Go Tell It on the Mountain mm. in a dashiki. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they knew, your family knew from when you were like two or three that when I was you three. had. 
the, I was the singing talent before I was sing. talking. Yeah, I was singing. And, <laughs> and Scott, what about you your your parents? Did, what was their feeling about your you know leaving the church choir to do poetry and then turn to rap? Were they happy about it? Or initially, they, think, they thought I was going to be an artist, <laughs> a painting artist. Um, I did illustrations. You're like a Renaissance man. Yeah, pretty much, and um, that's what they expected of me, and I just took a liking to music. But do you still paint? No. Do you, I you don't, don't do any kind of art? I Does draw he... here and there. Portraits. I'm into portraits. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, so how do the people find you on the social media? You can find me on Instagram, Cognac Daddy, C O G N A C Daddy, and Twitter, same thing, Cognac Daddy, C O G N A C D A D D Y, and, and uh, YouTube, Mr. Hennessy 626. 626. 626. And, and what about on Facebook? Facebook, no Facebook. You're not on Facebook. The feds on that. They're liking too many pictures. I, so. le I let them just check no, me Let me explain one thing to you. I don't mind. There is no privacy. It don't matter Thank where you. you're not. Let them see. In fact, right now, I get, there's a little mosquito drone in here. I you're, believe We're it. all being watched. There's no escaping it. There's just no escaping it. And um, not in this day and age. It's getting... The, the technology is is getting nano. where... It's nano. It's unbelievable. Yeah. They've got butterflies and they've got mosquitoes that... It's like uh, Star Trek time. That's what it's like. And some of the technology is great. I saw a thing on Facebook with a dog that has four prosthetic legs. I saw that yesterday, too. The dog too. got frostbite. And he's got a smile on his yeah. face. Yeah, and then another dog had these uh, whacked out paws, and they got a 3D printer for like $50, <laughs> wow. these 3D printers. They got a sweet and 3D it's printers the tech, We, It's moving so fast. It's unbelievable. Mm. So, um, mm. but but uh, what was I going to say? Um, yeah, you... you you got to forget about the feds. You have to be on Facebook. I mean, you have to be. I think it's better uh, Twitter, How man. How are they? Well, for what I do. Twitter's there's something. There's Facebook's two, so personal. There's new things coming up, but because Twitter only gives you 140. Yeah. See, on Facebook, you can post your Everything. songs and stuff. You but you can, can't do that on Twitter. You can do it on uh, Instagram now. Oh, you can do it on Instagram? Yeah, and Twitter. Okay, Twitter, you can Instagram. actually do that. You can now. Is that right? Yeah, you can do more than oh, that. Oh, you, you can. I guess you can put a link on Twitter. You can put live right? feed on there now. Oh, is that right? Yeah. How do you do the live feed on Twitter? Oh, see, I got to show you. I got to school okay, you after you the show. Okay, you got to school me. No. All right, right And uh, so you got you found all these people. Yes. Well, they knew each other before they met you. No, <laughs> I, I found it them all. I found, you know, people always ask me, well, how do you find your artists? How do you find yeah, your how do you? musicians? Craigslist um, ad? No, I don't do oh. that. Um, Tell them the story. Um, no, you know, I, I, no, I'm just giving them No, no, I, um, the... L.A. casting is one way, but I never go through there. I, I, I thought about it. Uh, my boy, uh, Dwayne Wiggins, or Tony, 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 that's where he gets a lot of his uh, artist background singers from. And, and I thought about it one time. No, but you know how I really get my artists and my, my, my singers is to God. It's, yeah, I was God. just going to say, Pete, God, that's how I know. got Merlin. Yeah. I walked out my front real. door. He was tied to a telephone pole. Yeah, that's real, man. You know, that, that's oh, it's really no real. question. You, you know. People and come my to man, uh, let me get a story about my man Hennessy over there. Um, actually, his stepdad is one of my best friends. Oh, okay. And when and we played junior college ball together back at Citrus, and he was he was a hell of a running back. I mean, this guy, I mean, he was phenomenal. Really? Uh, yeah, he was. I've I've been I've been around some great running backs. Uh, uh, this he guy was the here, ticket. He was he was the man. I mean, he really. I've been around some great running backs. Let's put it like that. And. Um, and um, we were supposed to thought about going to USC together, and um, we went to Pittsburgh together, and um, um, I ended up going for going to, going to Cal. But that's how I I met him. Um, a friend of a friend who went to Citrus said, "Hey man, you got to listen to this guy." And I was going to deal with Sugar Free out of Pomona, and then I started thinking, "No, nah, no, nah, I'm not. I'm I'm going to well, go." What a different age route. did you meet Hennessy? I met Menace, I, I met just recently. Just or? recently, oh. yeah. But I've been knowing his his stepdad for almost I gotcha. thirty years. And okay, cognac daddy. Where does this? <laughs> it didn't start at. Were you drinking Hennessy at fifteen? No. no, I was no, drinking Southern Comfort. <laughs> <laughs> I was drinking Southern Comfort. This Southern Comfort. <laughs> <laughs> nice yeah, you white. Know, you know these whiskey. Nice guys. white yeah. middle class Jewish boys. We were drinking Southern Comfort and smoking pot at fifteen, at 15. running around that neighborhood. Is that Every right? car in that neighborhood had dents on it when they when we got. Our our driver's permits. No, and, I'm not a cut you off, but yeah, uh, that's what don't on. leave out Sky over here. I, how I met Sky. How, yeah, how did you meet okay, Sky? Okay, how did I meet Sky? Let's um, do this real quick because we're going to wrap up and go to the next show. So I met Sky. Basically, I was um, doing showcases and I run a film studio out of Inglewood. And um, Sky was a part of a casting agency. 
that her and her a partner her was running throughout my actually um, I was industry. I'll tell him the story. Go ahead, tell He him. had a fantastic studio that he would rent out to people. And right. I was good friends. Somebody met me. I meet people all the time on the street. And she's like, come in and help me uh, with the casting shoot because I'm a, I'm very creative. So okay. I came in with her on the casting shoot and I met DeAndre and I was like, this cat is really cool. And he had this really nice uh, vet. And he was like, come here because he heard me sing something. He goes, I want you to check something out. And I listened to it and he goes, would you be interested in singing on this song with me? And I was like, yeah, man, sure. And that's really like how we how we met. I thought he was really cool. And yeah. I was like, you know, he didn't know that I was a singer when he when he right. wrote. I, did, I didn't know. I just now, blew something like that. Did we bring like a that. new Faith song to play for the opening of the show? Um, yeah. Yes, but Sky doesn't like it. Which one? Sky doesn't like it. Sky doesn't and like it. Just totally Sky really doesn't okay. like it. Okay. Right, we're going to wrap this up. and we're going to go on to the next <laughs> show. Yeah. Well, okay, so say goodbye to the people. And goodbye we're gonna, to the people. We're going to wrap this up. And then we're going to. Don't forget um, to follow. Yeah, follow. Follow. Holla. Holla. Cognac Daddy and I are going to hook it up in a minute. Holla at Cognac Daddy and Sky. Give us some free pit bull drinks. You ever see that That's Chappelle right. sketch? Come on with it, you guys. You ever see that Chappelle sketch? Holla, holla, holla. <laughs> <laughs> you do it like good. like your man. smile when you do, you do that. You do that. Every day I'm hustling. Every day I'm hustling. Every day I'm hustling. Every day I'm hustling. Every day I'm hustling.